Please, ladies and gentlemen, meet Dr. David Bierman, Senior Lecturer Tourism of the University of Technology in Sydney. And we have Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good. Pata Rapid Recovery Task Force is today the official apps. We have been working on the question how can we help in case of a member needs to rebuild his business. And this is what we came up with. As mentioned in the beginning of this staging process, there was the Bali bomb. And not much later, there was the SARS crisis. And that's where we at PATA, and we had the PATA task force going to Bali about a week or three weeks after the bomb. We started recognizing that we as PATA should do something about it. And this first booklet, it won't happen again to us, is what we started. We then tried a system called the PATA Emergency Information Exchange Panel. We called it Pink Team, but that was probably too sexy and it didn't work. So, long story short, we found a different way. As Mr. Edison said, we shouldn't give up after one time. And a few months later, we were given the broom to start getting the system going. And that's what happened. It all originated in Beijing with the Beijing Declaration on getting our task force ready and the clear indications. So we went and started and took off together. The declaration is based on restoring confidence, reducing negative economic impact, and acceptance, and working together to correct such perceptions accordingly. We also looked at providing assistance, and as you can see, sought after assistance, as well as assist our members to bounce back, and the stakeholders in general to work on also, so that we can come up with fast systems and strategies, which you see the first results of in these days. Good. The objectives are two side, proactive training and reactive communication. As I mentioned to you, we have a team of members around the world making sure that, as the chairman said, we are ready for a crisis happening on Sunday night, 3 o'clock, when we in Asia are all happily sleeping. We meet on a regular basis through Skype. And by using the Skype system, we were able to put the whole system together. Training on the 4R simulations and who should take the responsibility. And communication on what can we offer. That's why we have this press conference as the first step. How can we help each other? And when and where should we help? And where and when should we not help? Working on web communication, working on social media communication making sure we know who the spokesperson is before the crisis happens. We have a whole activation procedure ready, which we share with, in the team and with some of the part ahead of us. So when this happens, we can take this sheet and it will step by step guide us through the process. So in the middle of a mess, we still have a very clear process. But this is not the objective. We will not write in. And we will not. So we have, together with David, produced this booklet, Bounce Back. And now over to you, David. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm unmuted now, I'm happy to say. Bounce Back, of course, has been produced already in English, in uh, Japanese. and uh, That was released actually last year at the World Tourism Summit. And of course, just most recently in, uh, in Chinese. And this is just the start. We can move on next. Hello? Yeah, keep talking. Okay. The All right. The content, okay. the, the content of uh, basically what, what Bounce Back tries to do as a booklet is to really focus on the four R's, which is reduction, uh, readiness, 
um, re um, response and recovery. And we've got a book of seven chapters, uh, which you can actually see there on the screen. We can move on to the next one. Okay, we also talk about very important in understanding a crisis to understand the level of severity. So the, uh, a crisis for, and probably the best example in recent years, the um, uh, volcanic ash clouds in Europe, which basically disrupted tourism all over the world, would be a big one, would be a, what we call a DESCON 1. Um, something like the Thai floods would probably be ranked as a, a, de, as a DESCON too, because it was a crisis that affected one single country. So that was in part one. Part two. Okay, we then focus in the book on uh, on risk management, and uh, basically there's a whole section on how we a, a good tourism organisation actually is prepared for any of the major things which could happen to them. And of course, we have a lot of focus on security. Moving on. Part three. You should have now four hours in front of you. Yes, I, I'm. Uh, I'm just. We're just. Just trying to move on to the next slide. Actually, I oh, thank you very much indeed. So then we talk about it in the book on effective risk and crisis management, which again focuses on the concept of reduction, readiness, response, and recovery. You have to have all of those four. Uh, ducks in a line, so to speak, in order to target them properly. We then look at the concept of recovery, uh, which I think a lot of destinations are getting better at, and we put in a 10-step recovery process. Moving on, in part five, which is looking at dealing with the media. So we put a lot of focus in Bounce Back on how we work most effectively with the media, something that, of course, that PART has done very, very well since Project Phoenix in 2003, which is now 10 years ago. And in fact, I think we're getting better at it all the time. Now we have to deal, of course, with social media. Part six, of course, looks at the concept of the, highlighting the importance of social media. Uh, social media now is a critical issue in terms of dealing with, uh, with any sort of crisis message uh, or recovery message. And finally, part seven, which is our next one, looks at the issue of some of the resources and references for risk and recovery and tourism. And I think it's important, something that Perth's already mentioned, and it's critical for what the PRRT is about, is that we just don't work by ourselves. We actually work with other international or transnational um, tourism organisations. Okay, if we move just along. Okay, the second result of the PRRT is something actually that Bert and I did a lot of last year. We actually ran seven um, different webinars uh, based, uh, which we operated through the part of headquarters in, in Bangkok. And we had over 200 participants. Uh, I understand we're going to be doing them all over again, so that will be wonderful. But it's a great way to get the message across. So our, our, our issue really is about getting people prepared. And I'll hand over back to Bert. As already mentioned to some of you who are here in the room, our first test case was on September 7, 2011, when very close to the Pata Travel Mart, a bomb was exploded with some fatal accidents. And unfortunately, um, or fortunately, none of the PATA members uh, was in the area. But of course, we right away here at PATA head office got all kind of phone calls. Are the people safe? So we reacted. Some of our people were, like Scott, uh, like uh, Ken Scott, were there. And within a couple of hours, we were able to update the website. We were able to tell the people that the bomb explosion had no impact and the fair is going on which was then taken over directly by the trade press and within, let's say, 24 hours, everybody knew exactly that whatever happened in Delhi had no impact on us. Then, of course, we got the floods in Thailand and, as again, once mentioned already, we worked very closely with the TAT, with the updates that they issued and with the feedback that we had on where to look and what to see and how to get information. So giving unbiased sources of information instead of telling the people, don't worry, there is no reason 
to not come to Thailand, because of course nobody believes. Again, we use Facebook, we use Twitter, we use all the systems to communicate very clearly and very powerful with everybody and get the message out. We linked to this kind of map so people could see where the water was and this for instance was a moving map that really was updated every couple of minutes so you really, if you would sit in front of the television you could, or in front of the TV you could see or you have a monitor, you could see the water more or less moving. We not only looked at local sources, we also looked at some sources outside. Um, this forward keys is a source of information of how airline reservations are being booked and unfortunately in this case are being cancelled. So we could see a clear pattern of reservations during the period. And we could look at impact on core source markets with the help of that same organization and how travel was moving around and unfortunately away. Again, member news, water receding, central bank or dry was the kind of situations we had statements by the public and working together with the TAT and with other organizations. We really spread the word very powerful. Twitters and some other messages. So that brings us to a more recent situation, David. Okay. Well, as, as everybody knows, of course, Cyclone Evan hit uh, Samara and Fiji uh, just in the middle of December. And we had a classic case here where Fiji was incredibly well prepared and, and uh, Fiji, sorry, Fiji was very well prepared, Samara wasn't. So very, very important in terms of good handling making sure that people know in advance, making sure you've got clear lines of communication and that there's a recovery alliance, something that the Fijians do very well through the Tourism Action Group. Uh, in Samoa there were problems of lack of communications, lack of information on the status of infrastructure. Uh, the PRRT and Pater actually did work very closely with the Samoans once they actually knew what was happening. Difficulty that they had also too was that the internet actually went down in, in Samoa and a lot of communications did. So I'm not saying that they did the wrong thing, but, but certainly there were problems with backup systems. Okay, we, uh, we move along. Um, certainly so far as Pata was concerned, uh, Pata was in touch uh, both at, at head office level and also with the PRRT with the uh, tourism authorities in Fiji and Samoa and the part of the website did publicise updates on both on the situation in both countries. Let us move right along. Uh, and that's the question about what, what's next. Well, we've, we've, although it's a launch tonight, uh, PRRT has actually been active for about a year and a half already. Uh, we are planning to issue uh, bounce back in more languages and uh, this is involving a lot of cooperation with the ASEAN, with ASEAN tourism, which is fantastic. Uh, we just move along. The next thing that we'll be looking at doing is developing some, also to some CD-ROM uh, training manuals. We're working very closely. I have certainly for 10 years now with government travel advisories, so if we can just, just, move, just move ahead. Um, we often think of governments uh, as a them and us arrangement. The governments are bad, they're issuing negative advisories. We're the good guys, we're trying to save the travel industry. The truth is, certainly in Australia and a number of other countries, we actually work very well together. However, we've got to understand that if you have a negative travel alert, uh, alert against a particular country, it does have a lot of financial implications, none of which are very, very good. But it is important that we develop, that every country actually talks liaises with the foreign ministries of countries, whether they're doing it at source market level or whether they're doing it uh, directly. Um, we've had two of our, three of our members actually, Chris Flynn and myself are both on the uh, uh, travel industry, the, the Smart Travel Advisory Group in Australia. And we've got Emma in the UK who's actually on the foreign and foreign office uh, advisory board in, in the UK. Uh, there are only three countries in the world actually where we have this, this relationship. Uh, messages that come across which are really important in travel alerts uh, and it's certainly something that Smart Traveller does, they talk about the importance of insurance. And we do, that's a message that we need to push 
universally through the travel industry, if we may just move on. Uh, and I'd like to say thank you to Travel Guard Charters, which has supported a lot of the work that we've been doing. Okay, uh, moving right along. And I hand back to Bert here as we talk about the rapid response in 2013. Well, we're going to try and make sure our members see crisis as an opportunity and make sure to help them to protect their assets accordingly. That can be done, again, proactively, reactively, and it is important that we also look at how to work with risk assessment organizations. In other major industries, there are a lot of expertise, and there is a lot of expertise, and we believe we can still learn a lot from this kind of organizations, and we're talking to some of them, how can we do it? I mentioned before, local assistance organizations, like the SOS system, is a perfect organization to be in contact with us, and organizations like the Red Cross also will help us to become more professional and therefore more effective and protect the interest of our customers, the guests, the passengers of our business. And we're working on getting more volunteers and once again, after the launch, we will send all our members a request who wants to join us on a volunteer basis and working together. Interorganizational collaboration is another step that we're going to do and that's where David is the expert. Yeah, um, just just uh, one, one area that I've worked very closely with here in recent months and years has been with the UN World Tourism Organization. Um, we've actually had collaboration not only with the UN World Tourism Organization but also to, with the Australian Emergency Management Institute. So we're actually working now to integrate emergency management with tourism. Um, we see it as very important as an organisation to, to be part of a transnational tourism network and uh, both Bert and I have, have done work in Japan. Uh, we, we did it as, in a sense, as PARTA uh, and of course in the world and the WTTC uh, gave PARTA, the UNWTO and themselves a platform to be cooperating in the issue of risk and crisis management. So alliances globally are really important and the PRRT is playing a, a fabulous role in that area with other international tourism organisations. If we might just move along there to the next one. You have okay. Um, emergency no. management slide should be there. Okay, so we've, we've mentioned about the, the concept of, of PARTA was actually very involved in the UNWTO conferences. Uh, on emergency management and tourism, which I, which I co-organised with the UNWTO in Australia in over the last two years. Uh, we've had people from all over the world. And I, I noticed also too in some of the, the slides that Bert has is now that we're looking at working very closely with ASEAN uh, in their crisis communication team. Now this is really good because this is a very Asian uh, example of cooperation and I think PATA and ASEAN are a natural uh, alliance in terms, and you'll notice that the crisis communication team, when you look at this, is doing very much the same work that the PRRT is, which is great because they're more specific to a particular region, we're more general to, to uh, 60 countries in the Asia Pacific area, and it makes a lot of sense for us to work together. And I notice also too, like the PRRT, the, ACUM, the uh, ASEAN uh, Crisis Communication Task Force is, is only been mobilised on the request of individual countries. And that's a very important way in terms of how we work. Uh, that we don't just run in and tell people how to do their things. The other area which we're involved in, and in fact uh, in, in a week I'll be in New Zealand for the Corky Conference, which is the uh, Council, which is basically the tourism academics uh, of Australia and New Zealand, but we actually have tourism academics coming from 25 countries. Um, I, along with uh, Brent Ritchie at the University of Queensland. We're actually the chair, the, the co-chairs of the special interest group on tourism risk crisis and recovery and we are now the biggest special interest group amongst tourism academics in the, uh, in, in the Australasian region. Uh, and I'm really pleased that, that that means there are a lot of lecturers and a lot of uh, high degree students who are actually seriously researching that field and that's very good for the tourism industry globally. Uh -huh. I shall hand back to uh, Bert. 
Another example is an organization which is called ITOP. There are cooperation between what they call small islands. I don't think Okinawa or uh, Bali is a small island, but they are working together and they have an exchange program also and they are now discussing, I did a presentation on behalf of PATA last year in Okinawa and they are now discussing to adapt the PATA system and use the same concepts also as a communication tool between them. Last but not least, another application, again mentioned to some of you already, together with the ATA, the travel agents, the TAT, the ministry and the Thai Hotel Association, guided by the Tourism Council of Thailand, which is a representative of the private industry, we have now set up a Thailand Tourism Crisis Communication Task Force and we are ready to take action. We have a communication tool, we have one more, a communication network, fortunately the ministry is a little bit white yet but we have names from everybody else and next one please, we have also an activation and you can see this is basically exactly the same as what we have with the PRTT, so it's just adapting the concepts of the PRTT to a local situation. So no reason to say no, we don't have the time, we don't have the knowledge. We at PATA have the knowledge and this is something we will share with everybody because if it only can save one life, we have done our job already. Next one please. So let's work on bouncing back. Let's work all together. Please spread the word. Please realize that we can do. Next one. And please realize also that when there are no crises happening lately, we have a tendency to yeah. out it. So the last year and a half, things were really not so good. And yes, David, back to you. Okay. Well, obviously, it's great if you can bounce back with us at, uh, in the PRRTP. We're really looking forward to, uh, to, to playing our part to, to help uh, PATA and to, I think, add some value to the terrific things that PARTA does all over the world. So certainly um, the important thing to do, it's, it's just, just as, an, as it's important to run a profitable business, you also need to be able to run a business which is going to bounce back from uh, any of the challenges that are there and the better prepared you are for it, the quicker you're going to bounce back. And yes, anything can go wrong, but the thing is, what we hope we will do is always learn from our mistakes and learn from our problems. Uh, and that even includes putting the lens down. <laughs> Tell them when we're looking through the binoculars. Certainly perhaps clarity. We, we certainly think in all areas is that, and I, I know because we've just had floods over the last uh, week in Australia and we had bushfires a couple of weeks before that, we seem to have to bounce back a lot in this country and I know it's a common a feeling that you have in Thailand and certainly I think throughout the region. We're always looking at, uh, at bouncing back and certainly we're, we're looking forward to working very, very, very closely with all the PARTA members in all of the countries in which PARTA operates. Uh, thank you very much for having me in this, this evening from Sydney and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And uh, Bert, thanks for letting me be part of the PRRT. It's a privilege. And we wish you a good night and a sleepless or a dreamless night with no crisis. Thank you very Thank much, you. David, and talk to you. Okay, good night.